Let's start by talking about twisted pair cable. The most common type of cable used in today's networks is twisted pair, and the most frequently used twisted pair types are category 5, category 5E, and 6. Here are some cable types and the maximum speeds they can achieve. Now, with each of these cable types, there are eight wires, or pins, which are grouped into pairs. So, eight wires, four pairs, and the pairs are twisted along the entire length of the cable. First is category three, and this is rated to a maximum of 10 megabits per second, which is good enough for regular ethernet, but it's really not suitable for today's applications. So it's really considered a deprecated version of cable, but you will still see this in some companies, and most likely we'll be doing some upgrades in the future. Next is category five, which addresses the speed limitations of category three, and this can achieve 100 megabits per second, which is suitable for fast Ethernet networks, which you will see in the field. Companies are always looking for more speed, though, so we also have Category 5E, or 5 Enhanced, which is suitable for 100 megabits per second and gigabit networks. And depending on how it's installed, you can get a much higher uh, data throughput than Category 5. And finally, Category 6, which goes even faster and is suitable for gigabit networks. Regularly, admins use UTP cables, short for unshielded twisted pair. This type of cable is the favorite among network admins because of its flexibility, easy installation, and speed. There is, however, some research you must do first so you know what wiring standard to use and what color sequence to work from. Most wiring standards are based on the original BOG-B standard, which some call the AT&T standard. This specifies that the wires go in the order blue, orange, green, and brown. The 568A and B standards are based on this. And generally speaking, the most common standard you'll see is the 568B standard. You should memorize the color sequence for this standard at the very least. Now let's take a look at the uh, standards and their colors. On the left hand side you see a column that shows the pin number, or the wire number. And then we have a column for the 568B standard and its color sequence, and a column for the 568A standard and its color sequence. If you look under 568B, you'll see it says white slash orange. That means that the wire is mostly white with orange stripes. The next one is orange, and usually that'll be a solid orange wire. Sometimes it'll be mostly orange with a white stripe, and so on. White, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. I, I recommend that you memorize the 568B standard. Now, if you look at the 568A standard, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is the green and the orange have been switched. And this is how we get crossover cables. Now, first of all, if you wanted to make a basic patch cable, it would be known as a straight through patch cable. And that would be 568B on each end. But if you wanted to make a crossover cable, you'd use 568B on one end and 568A on the other end. And what happens in this case is pin one crosses to three and pin two crosses to six. So you get that crossover cable. Okay, so let's talk about making a category 5E patch cable. Sometimes you'll be called upon to make a patch cable and this may be either to connect a computer to a jack or to connect a port on a patch panel to a hub or switch. It could also be to make a custom link. Either way, it's an important skill to learn, so let's begin. For this procedure, you'll need the following. Six feet of Category 5E UTP cable, or Category 5 will work as well, two RJ45 plugs, a cutting tool, any sharp cutting tool will do, a wire stripper, in this case I'm using a weed muller wire stripper, an RJ45 crimper, and I have a Paladin Tools crimper over here on the right, and a patch tester so we can test the cable when it's done. What you want to do is uh, from your spool or box of Category 5E cable, cut a six foot length. Of course, it could be more if you like. UTP cable could be up to 100 meters or 327 feet, but for this procedure, six feet is fine. We will use this for our patch cable. Get two RJ45 plugs ready as well. Now with the wire stripper, remove about two inches of the PVC or plastic jacket from one end of the cable. And you'll see the exposed wires. When you remove that plastic jacket, 
you'll see the eight wires twisted together into four pairs, hence that name twisted pair. Unravel all these wires one by one, straightening them as you go. Here's the exposed wires in order. As you straighten the wires, put them in order according to the 568B standard we talked about. White orange orange, white green blue, white blue green, white brown brown. Start with the white orange wire and move down the line as illustrated. As you work, hold the wires in place with your thumb so they don't uh, fall out of place. Then you want to cut the wires flush. Cut the wires to length and make sure they're flush. I like to do this with the RJ45 crimper, but any uh, straight cutting edge will do. And you'll need about half an inch of wire exposed after the cut is made, as illustrated. Really, the wire isn't exposed. It's uh, the wire with its plastic coating. But as far as the plastic jacket goes, you want a half inch of these wires exposed. And keep your thumb on the wires after the cut is made to keep them in place. And you can see that they're in order here. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Push the plug until the wires are fully inserted. The wires should go right to the end of the inside of the plug, as shown here. Also, the plastic jacket should make it past the tooth inside the RJ45 plug, as shown in the second figure. This will prevent the plug from slipping off. Now it's time to crimp. You want to fit the end of the cable with the plug inside the RJ45 crimper. Squeeze the crimper until the RJ45 is fastened. You don't need to use too much pressure, but enough to keep it sturdy. Some of these tools uh, will click. You might hear four or five clicks, and once you're done clicking, then you know it's crimped. When you're done with this, repeat the same process on the other end of the cable and crimp that uh, RJ45 plug on that other end. Lastly, we want to test the cable. Connect each end of the cable in your patch tester as shown. And tap the button on the tester and cycle through all the wires. A light should come on for both ends for each wire, one to one, two to two, and so on, all the way through to wire eight. If all correspond and all LEDs light up, your test has passed. Here's a close up of the LEDs. Optionally, Label the wire with a Brother P-Touch or a similar tool as a straight-through cable, and you're finished. Great work. Now, because you can buy straight-through and crossover cables, learning the process of making one may seem less important, but keep in mind, most admins will be called on to make these cables and varieties of them with different pinouts. Be sure also to memorize the 568B wiring order for the Network Plus exam. The next procedure is wiring a patch panel and an RJ45 jack. Now in the first lab, you examined layer one wiring and how to make and test a simple patch cable. I mentioned that most of the time you would purchase these patch cables because doing so would save you time and money. What I did not mention was that more commonly, you'll be wiring permanent layer one connections. And you can't really purchase these. By permanent layer one connections, I'm referring to long distance cable runs. For example, from a patch panel to an RJ45 jack. Now, for this procedure, you'll need the following. Six feet minimum of Category 5E or Category 5 UTP cable. A punch-down tool with a 110 blade. Category 5 or 5E patch panel. An RJ45 jack. A wire stripper. A cutting tool. And a continuity tester. Now for this lab, I'm using a Paladin punch-down tool with a 110 IDC blade. And here's an example. You'll be using the punch-down tool when working on patch panels, punch blocks, and different types of jacks. Now, in this example, you can see the blade on the left-hand side has the cut side facing up. You want to make sure there's a cut side on that blade so you can cut excess off the wires. I'm also using a weed muller wire stripper a Signamax 24 port patch panel, a Leviton 568B RJ45 jack, and a Testum con uh, continuity tester. So first you want to ready a length of cable and cut a six foot length of category 5E cable. You're going to strip one of the ends with your wire stripper to expose the eight wires as shown here. Take off about two inches of the PVC jacket. Now you want to separate all eight wires as demonstrated in the previous procedure but this time, organize them in the original order that we spoke of, BOG-B. 
the blue pair first, then the orange pair, then the green pair, and the brown pair. Always use the white with the colored stripes first, and then the solid color for each pair as shown. Now place the wires within the IDCs of the patch panel. So we want to place each wire or pin in its color-coded 110 connector. These are known as insulation displacement connectors or IDCs. Normally you would start with the white blue and move on from there. But with the patch panel we're using, any color order will work. Temporarily place each wire with your fingers or a placing tool. Keep the PVC jacket as close to the connectors as possible. Now punch down the wires to the patch panel. Use that punch down tool to connect the wires, but make sure that the cut side of the tool, if you have one, is facing away from the cable. If it's facing the wrong way, you'll sever the connection before the terminating point. Double punch each wire until all eight are done. The cut side of the punch down tool should remove all the excess wiring beyond the 110 connector. Let's zoom in on the finished wiring. Here you can see that the PVC jacket is very close to the edge of the wires. There's maybe a quarter to a half inch of exposed wires and each wire is punched all the way down to the bottom of the IDC connector and it's uh, trimmed off the cut side of that tool trimmed off the end so it's a nice clean connection. The next step in this procedure is to punch down the wires to the RJ45 jack. So strip the other end of the cable and separate the wires the same way we did before. Now note the color-coded scheme on the jack you're using. Most jacks will use 568A or 568B. And this all depends on what you want to use and what standard your patch panel is using. Regardless, the jack and the patch panel must be compliant. Now most likely you're using the 568B standard, so we'll wire the RJ45 jack appropriately. You want to match the wires with the correct color. For example, if you look on this jack and you see where it says B, right next to that you see an orange block. So that's where the solid orange wire goes. And next to that there's a striped white orange block. So that's where the white orange wire would go. And so on. Place the wires in the colored connectors with your fingers or with a placing tool. And make sure that the PVC jacket runs as close to the edge of the jack as possible. Then you want to punch down each wire. Make sure that the cut side of the tool is facing towards the outside of the jack. This will ensure that you do not sever the wires before the termination point and that you remove the excess from the end of the wires. The finished product should look something like this. Now most RJ45 jacks will come with caps to place over the wires for protection. They simply snap on. The last step in this procedure is to test the connection with a continuity tester. You want to connect your continuity tester using the supplied patch cable and connect the supplied terminator as well. Make sure to use the port that you wired. They're numbered on the back as well as on the front. Now in this example I have the continuity tester connected to the patch panel and the terminator connected to the jack but quite often in the field I'll do the reverse of this and I'll walk around the building with the continuity tester. Turn on the continuity tester and test the connection. If all wires are correctly punched down on both ends you should get a beep and or a message that says pass and you can see the pass message as shown here. You'll usually look for the test or pretest option and may also be named 568B. It depends on the testing tool that you have purchased. It is possible that your test will not work the first time. With cabling you have to remember that practice makes perfect. It may take you a few times to get it right, so check the pins or the wires carefully on each end. Make sure that you're wiring each one correctly. They're usually color coded, so always check the colors. In addition, most testers will tell you what is wired incorrectly, so read the display carefully. Here's an example of an incorrect wiring connection. Quite often people who are new to cabling will reverse one of the pairs or reverse two colors. Sometimes you might wire the jack for 568A instead of 568B. Be alert for any potential wiring problems as they will most likely cause a connectivity failure. And there you have it. Good stuff. This is necessary. This is a necessary skill for all network administrators. 
you never know when you'll need to add a cable run or rewire a malfunctioning connection. So excellent work. Here's some examples of work I've done in the past and here you see a close-up of some mega patch paneling. This was part of a 400 drop cable job and you can see here that everything's nice and clean and tight and that's what you want. The PVC jacket is cut very close to the edge of the termination point and all the uh, wires are clean and everything is tie wrapped and nice and tight so it's immobile. You don't really want any movement on the back of that patch panel. And here we see a flush mount uh, jacks for telco and for data and we ran this uh, through the uh, cubicle areas that they had because they didn't have any wiring in them. Here we see some flush mount uh, telco and data jacks and as you can see here the uh, telco and data jacks are numbered and that corresponds to the network documentation for the entire physical plant. And uh, usually I use white for telco and uh, blue for data. And here you see some in-ground telco and data jacks and that goes through a concrete footing through a, a conduit. So that was definitely a fun project. Okay, in this lab you learn to create 568B patch cables, make connections between patch panels and RJ45 jacks. So we have the uh, temporary connections in the form of patch cables and the permanent connections in the form of those long distance runs between patch panels and RJ45 jacks. We tested various cable connections and we showed you how to use the patch tester and also the continuity tester. And we defined BOG B, blue, orange, green, brown, and the 568A and 568B standards. Plus we identified the various tools you'd use for cabling. I hope this lab helps you. And up next is lab seven, configuring a network interface card.